This video will contain boss spoilers to show the build off. It is finally here. Thank you guys for waiting. As promised for hitting 1K likes in 24 hours on my Skywalker video, here is the ultimate min-max Inferno build, Susano, which invokes that classic Susano vibe to me with just melting enemies left and right as you run along. But this took long because I wanted to create a whole new character for boss showcases, so that meant going through the game again, which was annoying. But yeah, I finally got everything I needed for the build. So before we begin, hit like on the video. I'm gonna show you three versions of the build. Min-max, AKA having duplicates of stuff. Then a new game version, no duplicates. And lastly, a completely different alternative. For starting class, Fire Cultist is best in slot or Condemned. Starting with the min-max version, which is most of the footage you see, using two grinning axes. These have a whopping 545 attack power and what's special is they deal both burn and ignite status. Ignite status is the main chase here, dealing an additional AOE proc whenever you trigger it, which with my rings, I trigger every single hit against enemies that aren't resistant to ignite or burn. In other words, you'll melt everything. So best in slot weapons because they're fast. The faster the weapon, the faster you trigger those explosions. To amplify this further, I use double rings of infernal devotion. These stack all rings stack so until that has changed we're going to abuse that and it's thanks to these that a trigger and ignite every single dual wield hit with only one ring you're going to trigger it every other swipe and with no rings you're going to trigger it every third swipe at least against this test dummy here so it's pretty much the rings that are what makes this op but both the axes and the rings are found in bramis castle which is the very end of the game basically so obviously you're not gonna have this set up unless you trade if you wanna play this build through story like I did. So the new game playthrough no trade version is one ax and one ring and then one secondary weapon with the burn status on it like the Fire Witch's flail here, which you get in the first fire area in Lower Calrath and the Ring of Night's Fire, which boosts fire damage, which is also found just before there in this location here. This is your alternative if no trading is involved and you still wanna rock the ax and ring setup. As a test, I did use this against Light Reaper and the damage was very solid, even against something that resisted ignites completely. Pretty much all fire bosses resist ignite or burn, so this whole mechanic gets thrown out the window, to be honest, and there's a lot of fire enemies, so despite how strong this build and combo is, it kind of evens out against fire enemies. But the fire spells are still strong, so with the help of them, beating fire enemies is still smooth. Now, the flail is good. We can also use the Mangler's Axe, which is going to be your early game weapon, which you can pick up from here in Windmill. And you can farm the second from those guys, or get the other from Damaros in the cave leading up to the Doggo Range Girl boss. And just do well those, and you'll clear most of the early game with that. For your last option is Skin Stealer Spear with 100 burn status and a superior spear move set if used as main hand. For amulet, best in slot is Rogar's Delight. You get this from the torture prisoner that you free in Skyrest. I have a link to a video guide in the video description, Same. not the pinned comment, the description, and you're going to want to do her quest to get more of these spells, but this increases fire damage and fire res. And lastly, your catalyst, Rogar's Heart, is best in slot because it has 5 spells and a lot of spell power at plus 10. You want 5 spells because Inferno is that good. You get the heart from Bramis Castle, Conflagrate Seers. So with those 5 slots, you want Inferno Guardian, found in the Tower of Penance here. This thing sucks, but it's extra damage that you don't have to manually cast and slow your DPS down. So it's actually more DPS than pretty much any other fire spell. And this build is all about DPS. So with this thing's help and your axes, you're gonna melt stuff. And it's integral for the gimmick eye I'll talk about later. Next, Hammer. You get it from the Tortured Prisoner Waifu I just mentioned. Check the description for a video link to that quest. This thing's amazing with great reach, and more importantly, it goes completely through walls. 
So PvP wise or just in general, this is very abusive. And in PvP, if a player does get hit, they usually get knocked down, so great spammable spell. Then we have a Deer's Rage or a Deer's Endurance. One buffs damage a lot, and other increases stamina regeneration a ton. Both are good, up to you which one to use. Both are gotten from Damaros. Forgot to record this spell, so using TTS. <laughs> Next, Infernal Weapon, giving us more fire damage and burn status, and you get this from a deer shrine if you didn't light any of the beacons, I think, but it's around the back of the shrine near a bunch of hands. If it's not there, which I heard some people say it's not there, I don't know where it's at. And yeah, lastly, Magma Surge, which is a boss spell from the big baby fire boss guy, and this thing is OP. You always leave fights with this as you can cast it from a distance, and it explodes and leaves a magma pool on the ground, adding to your DPS. I like to combo by using this first, and then using your hammer, and then going melee after that, and those are your five spells. For armor, if you want this sick Lilith or Phyrexian kind of look from Magic the Gathering, here are the pieces. Otherwise, just equip whatever you can while staying in medium. Now the cherries on top that make my damage way stronger than you probably have ever seen is runes. This one's probably gonna get you a little salty since you can only get one per playthrough, so the only way to have this many is duping and trading, but it's Sean runes. These boost elemental damage, all of it. That includes Ignite. Of course, you want to have six, three in each weapon, but there is an alternative, which is Tiernarch's runes. These give the same boost as Sean, and you can farm these from the Skeleton Knights or Fire Witches, I believe, so this is your free-to-play, no-trade option. But what's the difference? Well, these only affect fire damage. They do not affect ignite damage, the explosions, while Sean runes do. But the explosions only deal around 200 damage anyways, so it's not that big of an advantage. So yeah, Tiernarch's rooms are perfectly fine, and both will increase your spell damage too, the same exact amount. And the last piece to Exodia is the Umbral Eye of the Bloody Pilgrim, which is found in Upper Kalrath in this area around here. This eye increases damage a ton, but turns all your basic attacks damage into wither damage, so physical and fire into wither damage. The downside is wither damage can't kill enemies unless you burn them or ignite them, among other statuses, or use a spell to kill since our spells will still deal fire damage. But thanks to this build, thanks to the explosions, you'll easily kill everything still. So we get all the benefits with zero downsides. And again, the Fire Guardian spell, if something does live, that'll auto target and kill him. But yeah, best in slot I. I'll save the stats for last, but here is the normal game alternative, which gets rid of all the axes and rings and junk for the Fallen Lord Sword, and using the Umbral Eye of Losh to do charge attacks with Hyper Armor. This setup you're going to use mid-game all the way to the end or until you switch to the axes. I'm sure you've seen and maybe even used this sword before, but I min-maxed it beyond for you over what anyone else has done with it to deal over 4k damage per charge attack. So. Fallen Lord Sword, triple stack Sean or the fire damage boost runes, and we're only going to use this weapon two-handed. Then, your second weapon, offhand, never going to use it, don't even meet the stat requirements, is the Melted Dark Crusader Sword. You find this in Upper Kalrath area in the Umbral Zone, and then stick three Relox runes in it, which boosts charge attack damage. And last components are double Adir Kamara rings, gotten from Dama Rose. Again, link in the video description to her quest line. If you can trade, then your second ring will be the Ring of Night's Fire for more fire damage. But combine all this and you get 4.2k damage against this dude. Now you can technically use a Fire Axe with Triple Shawn runes as the offhand, which also boosts your spells. However, the charge attack runes give way more damage. So while the Axe will boost your spells a bit by 50 to 100 damage, the charge attack runes are giving your charge attack 1k damage boost in comparison, so clearly that is the route to go. And again, the Eye of Losh found after unlocking the door in the bell room at the very end of the area once you keep progressing that area. But keep in mind though, with the Eye of Losh, you're not totally immune to damage because at the beginning and at the end of the charge animation, basically when that blue glow is not up, you can still take damage, so be careful there. You still have to match your attacks up well, and I don't recommend charge attacking against multiple enemies. Use your spells for them instead. But yeah, I tested this against the same bosses, and this setup does very well. 
However, the footage does not use the damage setup I'm showing you, so you'll have even more damage if you mimic this setup. I basically didn't use the charge rings and the offhand sword. But I'll show the Fallen Lord Sword's location after stats. So for the stats, 75 Radiance for the cap, and then the rest into HP and Endurance. Easy peasy. From here, get HP and Endurance to 40 to 50, and whatever you want after that, who cares? You can reach like level 1000 or something in this game. <laughs> And that's Susano. I know not everyone's going to be able to do the Midnight's versions, but I want to show the absolute limits you can achieve in this game since trading is a thing and very easily doable. So do it if you can with a friend or through the official Law of Discord. Of course, you can do the new game reset thing with the whole patch stuff. So that is also an option to get duplicates. But hope you guys enjoy the video. Leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts on Inferno. Radiance just seem much more easier to take advantage of early in comparison, while the best fire stuff is like mid to late game and, and you need NPC quests that if you don't do them, you're gonna be screwed. But I think compared to my Skywalker build, this probably does better against PVE. Then again, I never used a true min-max setup for Skywalker, so who knows? But game's getting patches, so that's nice. Keep patching the games, devs. Our PS5 performance even worse now. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. That's it for me. Subscribe for more Susano epicness.